Welcome to the top 10 biggest 2012 college football fails. I just list 10 things about the Big Ten, but that'd be mean. So let's go wider scope with the mean, huh? Number 10, noted offensive gurus Charlie Weiss and Norm Chagall combined four and 20. One combined FBS win. You know, maybe there's a reason why the offensive coordinator job is more attractive to these two. Charlie Weiss leaves people not liking him in South Bend, in Kansas City, and in Gainesville. Where do you go when three big, interesting college football and pro football cities don't like you? Lawrence, Kansas. That's, that's where you end up going. And Norm Chow, all sorts of huge stints, and it just got itty bitty on the islands this year. Only a win against UNLV. Good, good luck, offensive minds. Number nine, defense in the Big 12. Just in general, Texas finishes 93rd in yards per play this season. Baylor finishes 104th. West Virginia, 108th. Kansas, 122nd. Honestly, they're just giving away free yards in the Big 12. Just go get them. Number eight, Pittsburgh Panthers. They get a new coach in Paul Christ over from Wisconsin, the offensive coordinator, and gets there and loses to an FCS school. Yes, the Youngstown State Penguins kind of own Pitt. But then Pitt goes and almost beats Notre Dame. And then they beat Virginia Tech. Pitt, I, I have no understanding of what you are. You confound me. I don't understand anything about Western Pennsylvania football. I hate you. Number seven, speaking of Virginia Tech, they were a top 16 team to start the season. Logan Thomas, he's a converted tight end. Maybe he'll play quarterback in the NFL. Maybe he'll be a first rounder, felt like that. And then he finishes 87th in passer rating in the country and throws 17 touchdowns to 14 interceptions. So now he's just a converted tight end. Number six, you're going to have to stop me if you've heard this one before. A lot of expectations for Florida State, and then they lose to a below average team on the road. Every year, every single year, this is what happens with Florida State. By the end of the season, they'd only lost one game before playing Florida. And people said, oh, well, who cares? They play in the ACC. So Florida State, eh, ACC. <laughs> Number five, I'd love to just talk Big Ten, but I'm gonna have to zero in on one very special team. Nebraska, you finished with 10 wins, double digit win season. Go to Indianapolis to play in the Big Ten championship game and give up 540 yards to Wisconsin, an unranked Wisconsin team, a Wisconsin team that barely got by Utah State. A decent Utah State, but Utah State! My favorite thing about this game was Bo Pelini's face, and I like Bo Pelini when he realized that his front seven couldn't stop anybody and there was nothing he could do, completely powerless on the sideline. It was just a collection of... Number four, here's where we get to talk Big Ten. Illinois hires a coach in Tim Beckman that made people miss Ron Zook. Ron Zook. Iowa still owes Kirk Ferentz about $10 billion. Nothing but embarrassment for the Big Ten on the national stage, of course, starting with Michigan getting trounced by Alabama and having all sorts of bowl eligible teams that are going to get trounced. Yes, they will. Even if people are watching this after the fact, I stand by them getting trounced in their bowl games. Big Ten was an embarrassment this season. Not fun to watch, not worth it at all. I hate everything about them. Number three, the triumvirate of fail amongst coaches in the SEC. I, of course, am talking about our favorite, John L. at Arkansas. Kind of an impossible situation, but still, Louisiana Monroe. Derek Dooley, Tennessee, one SEC win this year. It's, you can count on one hand how many he's won in his career at Tennessee. Just awful. They started quickly and then just kept on losing. And of course, we talk about Gene Chizik, two years removed from a national championship, one FBS win. Forget about the SEC, they didn't win a single game there. They beat Louisiana Monroe, which I guess is a good thing, but really awful. And now, because of the SEC losing those three coaches, we now have an infusion of Big Ten, Big East, and Sun Belt coachery into the SEC. Thanks, guys. No, really, thank you. Number two, and this is a fitting number, USC starts the season number one in the polls, ends the season number not ranked at all. They lose five games, look awful on both sides of the ball at times, could not finish games, the coaching was atrocious, the play calling during the big games was atrocious. Stanford, UCLA, Oregon, Notre Dame, Arizona. These are all teams that maybe aside from Notre Dame, not nearly as talented as the Trojans are, could not have looked worse this season. One to zero is, is not a fun jump. It's not. And finally, number one, and how could this go to any other person? Bobby Petrino getting in a motorcycle crash with his mid-20s mistress, getting fired from Arkansas, setting off a chain of events, taking Arkansas from a BCS contender to, hooray, we almost beat Louisiana Monroe. You're awful. A good coach, but you're awful, and you just got the Western Kentucky job for it. Congratulations. 
All right, those are your top 10 fails of the 2012 college football calendar year. What did I get right? Where was I wrong? Let me know in the comments. I really will see you soon.